your hand into your neighbor's hand. Squeeze them and tell them, meet me at the finish line. Oh, Squeeze that hand and don't break it to tell them, meet me. Oh, at the finish line. I'm looking for your face. Hallelujah. I'm looking to see the maestro. Meet me at the finish line. I want to see you, mother. At the finish line. Mm. You may be seated in the presence of our God. In the apostolic atmosphere. Praise the Lord. I don't know what kind of bomb the Lord is traveling with tonight. I don't know what kind of machine he has in the ear. But I know whatever he has, it's the one for the hour. Now, I went to the end of the book. Because in order for you not to faint in this race, you have to understand how the story ends. That's right. That's right. Revelation is to the Bible what the word, the end is to a good book. And given the nature and the elements of our battle, it is absolutely necessary and requisite that we know how the story ends. Hello? Oh yes, Mr. Solomon, can you give me this uh, thing up here a little? Praise the Lord. So, when we are reading in the last great revelation in the canon of the Bible, we are coming to understand that all of the work from Genesis right down through Malachi, jump over to Matthew, and then through Jude into the Revelation, has a particular end. Yes. Hello? Yes. You believe that, right? Yes. Man. Okay. And so, what God wanted to do was to tell us that when we stagger or when we go weary in the battle, there is enough reason for us to remain in the right attitude because the story ends in a particular way. Hello? Alright. So, the Bible declares here in the 12th chapter of the book of the Revelations that there was war in heaven. Hello? Now, if there is war in heaven, what says on earth? Mm. Lord Jesus, oh, God. what says in the church? What says in your life? Oh Lord God Almighty. And so the Bible says that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, they fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought against Michael. War. It was an ugly affair. Hello? Now, as to when this war occurred, it must be here towards the end of times. And it's not speaking about the initial revolt, it's speaking about the final revolt. Hallelujah. Yes? So, Michael and his angels were met with an assault from the satanic system. Hello? Man. The devil is going to make one last attempt uh, to create a coup d'etat in heaven. Lord of mercy. Jesus. I've got to do this the way the Lord wants me to do. So, uh, here we have it now. Uh, that they fought, but the Bible says, and they prevail not. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah? yeah? That's interesting to know. Yes. That's important to observe. Yes. That even though there is going to be war in heaven, the war ends in our favor. Amen. 
Come on, come on. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't want you to jump it. I don't want you to scream and holler yet. Amen. But I want you to say amen if it's amen. And I want you to say out if it's out. Amen. And if you don't have anything to say, I want you to speak as the Holy Ghost gives you utterance. Amen. And so we find, I don't want to blow my voice here. Give me a little bit more presence. Hallelujah. It's key. Um, so what happens then is that uh, Michael was fighting. His angels were fighting. But uh, I wonder when I read the scripture, where was God? Right where was God? Satan and his angels were creating a ruckus. And there is no mention of the Almighty. Think the man think. Help me muster some comedy. Where was God? In all of the fracas, in all of the ruckus, a demon sword fighting, a demon bullet raging shot in heaven. Hallelujah. Where was the Almighty? Where was God? Right there. Right there, sir. This emphasizes the absolute omnipotence of God. God doesn't need to bring himself to fight with a Lucifer. He just tells his Admiral General, take care of that. Hallelujah, because he has already invested enough power in Michael and authority to deal with the dragon. Almighty God. And you and I are wondering in our circumstances, where is God? God don't even need to show up. He just need to release a couple of his angels. Matter of fact, he said he gives them charge over you to keep you up in all of thy ways. Let's not dash thy foot against the sword. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. And no matter how mad he is, he is not qualified to bring war to the Almighty. Amen. No test. He is the incontestable. He is the omnipresent, omnipotent God. He does not countenance a little worm that he made. He sits as God and just watch the order of things occur. You worry too much. You fret too much. Hallelujah. You diminish the awesomeness of God. My daddy is able and he has the capacity to deliver me from every trial, from every test, from every satanic gang. I feel the blood of the We are the church mothers and you can put some Jesus in the floor and you can put some Jesus in your seat and you can feed the blood in this place tonight because some people need to meet me at the finish line. Amen. Shut When you have it bad, you don't need to show that you have it bad because you just got it bad. Hello, somebody. The spear of his godness could never be impregnated by the devil because God is too high. You can't reach him. He is too wide. You can't get around him. He is too low. You can't get around him. My mighty God. And so God doesn't get perturbed when it seems like things are going sideways because he has everything under his control. Amen. So the great dragon was cast out. Yes. So please notice the Lord leave it to no imagination. The old serpent, the devil, Satan, the old dragon are one and the same entity. Hello. It's not four of them, it's one. And I believe Michael colored him in his palate and cast him out of heaven and say, your permit has been rescinded. Your authorization has been abnegated. You are no longer authorized.
authorized to come up here anymore. You have been served your eviction notice and you're going to get your new room and board in only a matter of a while. Hello somebody. God has a plan. And no matter what the devil does, what God wants to be done, it must be done. The will of God must be done. If it's not done in the beginning, it must be done in the middle. If not in the middle, it must be done at the end. But the will of God must be done. Amen. Do you think that Calvary was plan B? No. Mm. No. Do you think that God had to come up with a second avenue when Adam sinned? No. You think Adam's sin was a surprise? Hello. Hello. From before the world upon which uh, from which Adam was made was found the lamb was already slain. Oh no. Hallelujah. And you and I are worrying about how we're gonna make it over. Hallelujah. I've got a word for you tonight. Meet me at the finish line. Lord God, this one is very high up in here. And I heard a loud voice because whenever the devil gets mad, he's gonna try to retaliate against the things that God loves. So the devil is mad like 20 cow hallelujah in a pasture. He is mad. They have mad cow disease and they're knocking their head against them. The devil has come back to the earth and he is chagrined. He is absolutely angry and he's going to rip and shred and tear and destroy the cause. He lost the war. So he comes and he brings a battle to your front step. Jesus. And I heard a loud voice saying to him, Now it's come. Salvation. And strength. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Do you know he accuses you illegitimately and illegitimately? You know that when he comes up before God, he talks truth. He's not only a liar, he talks truth. Yeah, you do this and you did. Hello? So some of it is trust, some of it is lie. But he's still the accuser. He's never the one begging for mercy. He said, kill him, 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 kill him. You see God, you see you, you see you God, you have mercy on that one and you had no mercy on me. So the accuser is cast down. The devil doesn't take a break, you know, when he's accusing you. There is no break. Whether you're doing good or evil, there is no break. He's consistently bringing up your dossier before God. You see, he did not pray today. You see, he did not give an offering. You see, he just told a lie. You see, he just lost it. You see, you see, you see. Oh God, I think God got tired of him now. And he said, enough. And when he comes to accuse, oh, because you're under the blood. Hallelujah. The accusation becomes invalidated because Jesus is saying, as the mediator, I died for him. I died for him. It paid for him, Lord. Oh my gosh. I see the blood. The blood covers him. Hallelujah. The blood. Hallelujah. Where is the church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, the Bible says that they overcame the dragon. Jesus. They overcame the dragon by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And here's the part that many of us don't want to hear. And they loved not the Lamb even unto death. 
I want to take a little diversion just for a minute. The end time church, the mature church, the bride, groom, ready church, in all of her tapestries and all of her glory, <laughs> has got to learn to grapple with the last state of the satanic assault. And many of us, and I dare say many of us, if we choose to live for Jesus, are going to end up either dying for this thing or incarcerated for this thing. Well, I never, I never signed up for that Christianity. I signed up for the sweet one where I die on my bed, speaking in tongues, and go to be with the Lord. Hello? After all of my years of serving the Lord, I am not going to any prison. I have done enough prison ministry. But you see some of us? I mean, I'm saying this seriously funny. Some of us are going to go to jail because we are going to refuse to shut up about righteousness. We are going to refuse to compromise holiness. If I can't preach the whole truth, you might as well take my head off because I submit yes. and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If I live, I live, and if I die, I die. But I made it up in my mind. No retreat. No surrender. We ain't backing up. We ain't standing down. We are going to rise up and stand up. And we're going to decree. Sin is sin. And righteousness demands repentance from sin. Am I in the right church? Did I stop at the wrong club tonight? Lord God. Too much compromise. Too many jellyfish, too many chicken back. We have too much and too many amoeba in the church. Lord God, we need some lions to roar. Sire, we need some spiritual leaders to stand up and say, You gotta go through this, but I'm gonna live it and I'm gonna die it because I'm going to the finish line. Too much compromise in the standard. If you can't love me, you're not going to know heaven. If you can't forgive me, Lord, I feel it coming. If you can't forgive me, take heaven off your mood. If you can't accept the love of God in me, take glory off your mind. You're not going there. Go ahead, sir. Something is burning. Hallelujah. Maybe it's the party. I don't know. I smell something burning. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad it ain't my flesh. Uh. Hello. Everybody stand. I want you to focus. I'm Jesus right now. Hallelujah. I want you right now, right now, right now. Don't worry. Focus on Jesus. Close up everything else. Hallelujah. Focus. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to back down. I'm going to apply the blood. Thank you. And I'm going to live. Anybody in this place right now? Can you focus on Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. Call that holy name in prayer. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. 
too much compromise up in here. Jesus. We need the whole Jesus truth. against the church is as evident as the strife in the mind tonight. It's not the technician's fault. Don't look at it. The fight against the word of God is even evident right now. Some of you are not pleading the blood enough. Jesus. You intercessors that come to church and you're not on duty, you need to put the blood. I said in the wall, the speaker, in the mic, I feel it up in here this night. I'll meet me at the finish line. Oh God Almighty Jesus. So what we have to understand now is that it's time for us to redeem the times. Begin to understand that the two signs that Jesus gave that would represent the days before his appearance are already here. Yes. As it was in the days of Sodom. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So shall it be. Yes. Can you see Sodom? Yes. Amen. Pride. Fullness of bread. Yes. And abundance of iron. Homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Desexualization of the world. Oh, shall. Lord, isn't it evident? Don't you feel the feeling? Don't you see the spirits manifest? They are barefaced. He said, as it was in the days of Noah. Don't you see the Noah time? Nobody want to hear about Jesus. Everybody busy is doing busy, doing their own oh, thing. Dang. Amen. Mary. Giving in marriage, marriage, eating bread, laughing, wearing good clothes, and they don't care. Hallelujah. While Noah is there banging away, you've got to get right. You've got to stay right. You've got to live right. Amen. Redeem the time. Look at the time. Can you feel it? Hallelujah. I must suck. We are not intimidated. I know what's happening. Shalla Baba Saya. We shall overcome. We have to redeem the times. We have got to know the season. We have got to know the mandate. The Bible says, when you see these things, look up. The end is not yet, but your redemption try nigh. <laughs> So what Jesus is trying to say is that the warfare that we are experiencing now is directly because it's almost rapture. Anybody know what rapture is? Do you remember what it's called? The perusia? The catching away? Like it was in the days of Noah. Everybody love and know. Jesus. We never see it rain from the sky yet. If there were Jamaicans, there was a my youth, stop the foolishness. If there were Canadians, my brother, stop the nonsense, you know. Hallelujah, it ain't gonna rain. I don't know how to say it in French, or I would have said it. Hallelujah. Oh, brother Noah, what kind of a concoction is this? What kind of a contraption are you making? Why are you cutting down the trees? You're damaging the ozone, man. What are you doing? 
What are you doing, pastor? Telling people to love the Lord that they cannot see. What are you talking about? Going away to heaven. How is that possible? Gravity alone defies your rapture. How are you going to rapture when gravity is keeping you down? And how is it that you're going to know who goes and who stays? You're talking foolishness. There ain't no rapture. It is a Phoenician concoction. Religion is a factor of man's culture. There is no God. And there is no end time. And they are laughing at us. They are giving up careers. Taking lesser jobs. They are abandoning fame and riches and wealth. They have no sense. They are praying and fasting and passing good food up. They are ridiculous. They don't know. They are keeping one woman and one man. They are stupid. Don't they see that the balance is off? You have seven to ten women now to one man. So why are they having one woman? They're not having no sense. Hallelujah. Why are you keeping yourself before marriage? You're buying a puss and you're carrying it in a bag home. You've got to try on the shoes before you carry it home. It might squeeze you. Oh, y'all don't have any sense. If you got it, flaunt it. Why are you wearing so much cloth? It's ridiculous. You look emaciated. You're out of sync. <laughs> It's ridiculous. They are bubbling. They are having a mania. They are having some kind of psychosis and call it speaking in tongues. Intelligent fools. No, I was still knocking away. Glory to God. People still coming to prayer meeting. People still refusing to live like a harlot. The church is still under construction. While they laugh at us, while they mock us, we are applying the blood. We are learning to use the blood. That rich blood. Hallelujah. Somebody stop and help me call. And the blood. the satanic system right now we put the blood over our homes we put the blood over our bodies we release the blood over our appetites we release the blood over our drugs we release the blood in our souls that precious blood that redeeming blood that awesome blood that gushes from Calvary straighten up your differences. It's time to fasten your seatbelt for the ride is about to get rougher. You're going to be asked are you willing to die for your conviction? In Revelation the 6th chapter there is a ubiquitous cry. There is, there is a, a, a bone chilling cry man of God for those that were martyred for the name of Jesus. They are under their crying. Oh Lord Jesus. How long? How long? Do thou not avenge our blood at the hand of our enemies? They are crying even now. And the master is saying yet a little while. 
Zara C. Maybe two out of Montreal. Maybe seven out of New York. The RFC that are getting ready to lay their lives down. That's the Lord Jesus. Is it you? Oh, shit. Is it you? Okay, thank you. You know what's scary? Was after 120 years of ministering from Noah, not even his family was fully pursued. They were saved by association. Hallelujah. But you see, in this rapture, you could be related to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Hallelujah. You ain't going nowhere on his testimony. Your daddy could have been the first bishop. Hallelujah. From ever since Peter and Paul, it is nothing to you because every man shall give an answer for his own soul. So I can't go to the finish line for you and neither can you go for me. Every man has got to work out his own salvation with fear and run with patience. Set before you because I'm guaranteed that when God says something, it has to come to pass. Amen. God told Noah it's going to rain. Like the rapture, he never told him exactly when until the day. And he wasn't even allowed to shut the door. Shut it in the cell. God lock it to him. Amen. Hello. I feel it getting a little warm up in here. Jesus. That's the Lord Jesus. Look at your hand out. Are you carrying any unnecessary baggage? Check your stuff. Oh my gosh. Jesus, I try and come. In your head is Mokosha. I am as serious as, as serious as I can be tonight. Sit down, you're scaring the visitor. Oh my God. Meet me at the finish. Minions in Jesus. Meet me. When you consider the measure of the glory that God has waiting for us, juxtapose or looking at it simultaneously as the sufferings that you have to endure when you look at the fact that you're going to actually live forever against a momentary fleshly pleasure can i help you go ahead sir can i help us tonight Amen. when you put it in perspective all right sir that the one night stand can cause you eternity. Can I preach it up? Go ahead, sir. Amen. When you get it in perspective, that the five million or seventy-three billion dollars cannot be spent after you are dead and after the world ceases to be it has no value oh my god you have many people gone to their grave they never have one gray hair you have people that gone to their grave they never were hungry once in their life you have people in their grave that have phd hhd ddhd dmhd md phd they have so many alphabets gone with them that we are scant of here and guess what the degrees cannot help them anymore Oh, go Shire. Look at your neighbor and say, get some perspective. You're going to run down the career at the expense of your soul. You're going to run down the degree at the expense of your eternal hope. Get some perspective. She pretty, but she's not worth it. Amen. He's handsome, but he can't match the glory. Hello? The money 
only sweet, but it is sour in your hell. Amen. I need to meet you at the finish line. And if we don't get the right perspective, church, we are going to come to a meeting like this. Jump up and say to Shanda and go on the roast in hell because we have all manner of nonsense in our possession walking with us on the race. We cannot run with load and weight. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to have his name. The Lord wants to have his name. I said, somebody here in trouble tonight. Somebody here has turned off the race course. Somebody has decided that they are going to quit this battle and they have had enough of this glory road business. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, shut up. Somebody, somebody. The Bible says the race is not to the swift. Not the strong. But to the strong. But to those that will endure to the end. He says, let's see then that we are in comfort about uh, with so great a cloud of witnesses uh, let us do what uh, lay aside the weight uh, and the sin uh, which God so easily beset us uh, and run with patience uh, the race that is set uh, before us uh, this race is unique uh, in that all finishers are winners Amen. Finishers are winners. It don't matter how you drag across the finish line. As long as you make it to the finish line and you cross, you are guaranteed of being in the beloved. It don't matter what you go through. As long as you cross the finish line, it will be worth it. Somebody here decided that they're going to quit for an olive color skin girl. Mm -hmm. funny. I'm speaking as I'm ready. Somebody in here has decided that they've, they've had enough women of God. This church thing has lost its effectiveness. And so they're going to go. Can I ask you to reconsider? Jesus. The Bible describes that uh, hell, in hell, the fire is not quenched. No. The worms are actually alive. You can sense them and they die not. The Bible says that there is a gulf fixed between hell and heaven. Such that those that are in heaven cannot cross over. And those that are in hell cannot cross over. The Bible gives us a story about the rich man and the poor man. Right. Hello, the rich man died and was buried. The poor man died and was carried. All right, I want to be carried. Don't bury me, just carry me. They carried the poor man into the arms of Abraham. And he was up there getting a rock about. Boy, I don't know, Abraham almost big, but he was in the arm of Abraham. And the rich man in hell, the Bible said, you know, Jesus talk, said that he paid Abraham, let this guy here, this leprous guy, come down and dip his finger. You mean the mother finger, yes, in a little water and put it on my tongue. And the he must have dogged him and laughed at him and thrown him a little bone every now and again. He wants this guy to take his finger and put it in the says. Blood of Jesus. Remember, 
revelation God says to him it cannot be he said then send him back to my brother and Jesus says if they don't believe the ones they have even if he come back from the grave they won't believe him they will obey him and science him and tie him up with garlic and lime hallelujah sprinkle salt on his foot they don't hear what I say they still won't hear him hallelujah kill your soul I have a question for you Play. inside outside and settle sick ocean the one that has the demonic worm battling before you I have a question for you what will your answer be when you wake up the other side of eternity and realize that you traded in your hope for despair I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight I feel a different kind of an administration go ahead sir sometimes. hallelujah and Mr. In and out the window in the church sister in and out the window in the assembly I know you didn't come here for this tonight, but the Lord brought this here for you. I say, I heard some screams one time in a vision that the Lord gave me. And it was people who were on their way to hell. Jesus. God gave me this revelation in the same time. Have you ever been driving on the highway? And you're uncertain of the exit. You think it's 33A or 33B. And you just right there and then you know. You, you, you can't. That's right. Have you ever been there? Yes. And the moment you are getting off, I say, okay, I'm going to take A. While you are on the ramp, it hit you. Wrong. It's actually Jesus. Jesus. Traffic behind you, call up to the left, call up to the right, the only way to go is Is it the right way you have to go? No, it's the wrong way. You still have to get off and see if you find a U-turn. You know what the Lord showed me? I went to the hospital to look for somebody who was dying. The person we preached to the person day in day out they wouldn't receive the gospel and the lord brought it back to my memory the lord says there are many people while they are going into the state of lostness are fully aware that they have made the wrong choice and there is nothing they can do about it Follow me into a hospice. It might sound cruel, but it's true. The person is totally incapable of moving. Not even their eyelash. But they're still alive. They know they need to be baptized. They are trying to tell you, but they cannot command your mouth to speak. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. They want Hallelujah. to say, baptize me, but they are just looking at you. Oh, Jesus. Speechless. Well done. Jesus. Jesus. Turning off the highway. Hallelujah. Negotiating the exit and realize wrong is it? And there is nothing you can do. You have to still go for it. Today, GPS respooling Reverend and can't find the alternate route. The Lord told me to charge you tonight. I, I really fought with this world. I preach, preach. I tell you the truth. I fought with the term. Okay? The rapture mummy is so near that if God should roll back the scroll for many of us, we would quit our job. We wouldn't go to work for the rest of our life. We would be fasting and praying because what? Many of us would realize that the rapture for us is next week. Many of us would realize that the rapture for us is two years' time. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah! 
and the seriousness of the rapture needs to be on the mind of the church while Christ is getting ready to blow the trumpet. Hello somebody. It's not time to contemplate which way to go. It's time to find the old path and stay in it. It's time to die for what you believe. It's time to live right or die. It's time to serve God or go to hell. I want to hear what I'm saying. It's time to find whether or not you're going to meet Jesus at the finish line. Somebody tonight need to come home to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. One church brother left church one Sunday night on his way home, drove him, he actually preached this Sunday, driving full bore reverend, hallelujah, lost his way and died. What if somebody could tell him in the service, I hope it's all right with you. What if somebody was telling you, them like oh, I'm telling somebody here tonight, that the rapture is nearer than we think. I said, I begin to feel things opening up in the spirit realm. My desires for God are beginning to open up. Can you feel them? Has anybody in here been feeling more homesick of late? Has anybody been trying to check your life and making sure that you have everything all signed and sealed? Have you been musing on Jesus mostly of late? The rapture is around the corner. It's time to stay steady on the race. It's time to quit you like a man and be strong. It's time to revisit your convictions. Reaffirm your confessions and stand up for the truth. It's not time to plan the revival. It's time to have the revival. It's not time to plan the meeting. It's time to execute the meeting. I know what I'm saying to many. Might seem like a haphazard set of nonsense, but I feel the Holy Ghost chiding with somebody in here who is about to make the most prolific mistake in their life. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. This is what the Lord is asking. If you knew that you had only five more minutes to live what would you do with that five talk Yes, yes. 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 What would you do? Let's make believe right now. Hallelujah. That the rapture is gonna come at 9 Jesus Christ. I need a church mother to begin to cry. The angel is getting ready with the horn with the chauffeur. Jesus Christ. The Lord is giving you visions, He's telling you things in your spirit. You're beginning to feel a different way about church. You have lost the temperance from nonsense and something inside of you is crying out for more of God. The Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you that Jesus is waiting for you at the finish line. Some of you have, hallelujah, fallen off of your ministry. You have given up on the higher calling. 
Isaac and you have settled down in Canaan and God is saying you've got to step up your game he says Scotty boy don't worry yourself tonight for what I want you to tell my people is that the finish line is nearer than they think and that they have less time than they are imagining that they have to run the race I would like to invite somebody to this altar tonight that see the pull of heaven on their souls they know you're not quite there you know you're not walking in your calling you know you have slipped and shot in hallelujah veered off the path and you came to this conference and you're wondering if God still loves you you're wondering if you're gonna get another kind of a regular message or are you gonna hear something that causes you to think I am asking you to get up from your seat rise up from your space get out of your lowly bar and get up out of your wells of liquor and come before the Lord and I'm asking you through the Holy Ghost to check your package do you have anything that is going to hinder you do you have anything I am not going to beg anybody to come no, no. the Lord says healing and laying of hands is not tonight no. he says it's repentance and rapture readiness oh. hallelujah I had it in my spirit hallelujah that the finish line is coming up for many of us and we are not yet ready in the finished position we have got to position ourselves to prevail I am looking for some conscious people that while I've been saying these few little nonsense words tonight I did not get in any revelation the Holy Ghost forbade me to deal with mysteries he never allowed me even to exegete the scripture because the cry of the spirit is that will you meet me at the finish line or will you have a glorified excuse am I in the right place am I speaking to the E or there is somebody here that feel God pulling you you feel eternity drawing you you sense that time is working against you I'm asking you to come.